Take 14. Tale of Two Towers. The Monologue. It was a day like any other in Gross Benson and the sun was shining, the crops were growing and I was free to pursue my studies. See, I'm in matters that are probably too complex for you lot to understand. I mean, if it does involve killing ogres, mindlessly stomping down other foes, or other brutish and violent machinations, any part of the type probably wouldn't be able to comprehend any of it anyway. Anyhow, around four ten days ago, there was a mighty shudder in the air, and that's when our town's first visitor arrived. I ran out of the hall and saw that Farmer McCulley's chicken coop had been completely crushed but looked like a large rock with a castle on top of it. The unlucky animals inside were all crushed to death, I'm afraid. After a few moments, I saw walking out of the still-setting cloud of dirt and dust what appeared to be a giant shadow. As it came closer, the figure resolved into the shape of a half-ogre. He seemed to radiate darkness from his very clothing. Our town's patrol officer took one look and fled, and he's normally quite a brave man. The half-ogre looked around and asked to speak with the town's sage. I, being new to the job, was reluctant to raise my hand, but several villagers pointed at me, so I carefully approached him and asked what his business was in Gross Venson. Hmm, you're not sage full strong. Where is he? The half-ogre practically growled at me. Dead, my lord. How? He was hit by a disintegration spell as he was playing shifting back home. He exploded into ashes before my eyes. The half-ogre thought for a bit, waiting a while before he spoke. I suppose he will not be returning then. You are the new sage? Yes, my lord. They call me Ritifin. I said as politely as I could under the stress of the situation. I feel it's always best to be polite when dealing with creatures that may just be able to destroy your town. Very well, Ritifin. I am Grishnak Oplafang, Shadow Mage and the new ruler of this town. I'm sure you will let the townspeople know. I only have two commands. One, leave my tower and me alone. Two, pay a tribute to me, to me of 100 gold a month. Beyond these two commands, you are free to do with, you, with what you wish on your time and my town. The first tribute is due in 40 days. He looked at me carefully, examined me for what felt like half an eternity, then turned and walked back into his tower. He feared an attack from the dark creatures residing in the tower for several days, but nothing came to bother us. And it just continued to sit silently on the east side of town. So with that settled, we relaxed and began to ignore our new lord. Then a ten day later, which would make it three ten days to go to today, one of the stranger things I've ever seen happen in all my years of being a sage. Again! There was another shutter and another rock with a tower on top appeared, but this time on the north side of town. A pair of beastly identical gnomes walked out and introduced themselves as Thizzle Twam and Thwam the Twins. Thizzle Twam said he was an illusionist. Twam said he was a cleric. Both asked while alternating every other word between each other, Where is the sage of this town? Since I was beginning to get used to dealing with visitors to our town, arriving on large rocks or as acclaimed as one can be, I boldly told them that I was a town sage and spokesman, and anything they needed to say, they could say to me. I said that I'd do anything in my power to help them as long as it didn't conflict with the wishes of our current lord, the Shadow Mage Grishnek. This didn't please the ghastly creatures one bit. Before I knew what had even happened, Thizzle Twam hit me with a rave of men, and then a reduced spell, a reduced spell. Imagine the audacity. Then Thwam threw a command, disrobe at me, and they carried me through the town on a dust devil. I didn't want to think about it. The nerve, the discourtesy. I was barely able to drag myself back into my house, looking like some kind of ridiculous child unable to walk properly. The gnome sent a messenger into town shortly after, some kind of clockwork automaton, and it posted a message on the town square saying that they were claiming ownership of Gross Venson, and anyone who disobeyed their wishes would be put to death. Attached to the bottom of the fire was a caricature of myself as a little gnomish person limping away, clinging to my robes. Can you imagine the audacity of them mocking the sage as far as I myself? How boorish! How completely devoid of decorum! Since then, the two towers have been threatening each other with messages posted on the town square almost every day. Every message posted by the gnomes is carried on a, a town by an automaton. Every message by Grishnak to the Shadow Mage appears on the board in the evening, carried by what looks like tendrils of the night itself. The shadowy vines would be quite beautiful to behold if the situation weren't so troublesome and frightening. Now, all the townspeople are worried what will happen when the tribute to Grishnak comes due. The gnomes have stated that they will see us paying tribute as an act of treason on our part, no matter what we do. We will offend one party or the other. The town could easily be wiped out as a result. The tribute is due tonight. I scried far and wild for adventures and finally found you, though my first spell seemed focused on that beastly young girl of yours. Needs to say, a battle between four very pow powerful spellcasters, the twins, Grishnek, and myself, would likely leave the battlefield completely destroyed. The battlefield, of course, being Gross Venson. Thus, I present you all with the task of sending one of the towers back to their home plane, wherever that may be. Personally, I hate those rotten little gnomes, but the thought of the shadowy mage with an army of darkness residing at the edge of the town is very, isn't very comforting either. Please send one or the other back home and let the rotten mess be finished so I can get back to my studies. Oh, oh my god. I hope I hit record. I'm gonna cry if I don't. Yes.